Well, good afternoon. I want to welcome you to another episode of The Fireplace Show. The Fireplace Show is produced and presented by the CVC Success Group. And on this show, our purpose, our mission, what we're trying to do is share information with the consumers of America and across the world and give them some great information about their fireplaces, their wood stoves, their chimneys, their venting systems, and all that. And during the show, we welcome your comments. We welcome your questions. If you're ready, with StreamYard, put your qu comments and questions up, and we'll address them on the show. Now, every week I try to pull up and have as a guest what I consider to be a subject matter expert, and today is no different because the gentleman that I have on here has been in the past, believe it or not, a competitor of mine. I'm now kind of a mentor to him and work with his company, and his name is James Owens, and he has two companies. One is Owens Chimney Systems, which is a chimney service and vending company doing chimney sweep service and uh, installations and repairs in the Charlotte, North Carolina market area. And he has another business that he started a couple years ago. And the name of that is it's Owens Manufacturing. And Owens Manufacturing is where James started to manufacture chimney caps for his own business and now supplies chimney sweeps across America. So James, you with me today, ready to rock and roll, brother? Yes, sir. Okay. Well, Julie Dent just came on. She said, good afternoon. That's one of your customers that buys from you, I believe, <laughs> at Chesapeake. So James, let's start out. Let's tell them a little bit. How'd you get in the chimney sweep business, bud? Uh, me and my wife started, uh, get, we got into the service business back in 1989 and uh, got in, you know, sweeping, doing the basics. Uh, and then early on, I ended up uh, getting uh, certified back in the early 90s through uh, the North Carolina Chimney Sweep Association and then went to CSA and got certified. I think in 96 was when I first got my certification. And we just kept going from there. Okay. And at one time, if I'm correct, you also served as president of the North Carolina Chimney Sweep Association for a couple of years and had some volunteer efforts. Tell us about that, man. Why did And your volunteers, how was that for you? It was good. Great experience. Learned a lot. Uh, met a lot of new friends through the uh, North Carolina Chimney Sweep Association. It was just a really good experience for me. I probably served as president. I served on the board uh, three years, membership chairman under uh, Tom Albert. And then I ended up uh, moving up to uh, the president and I was the president three terms, you know, three, three year terms and, um, you know, about nine years and just had a great experience on the okay. board total, probably over 10 years. Okay. Well, great. Well, let's go a little bit deeper. Tell us uh, how, how many employees does Owens Manufacturing and Owens Chimney Systems, how many employees do you have on staff today, James? Uh, in all, we got like 26 employees. Okay. Uh, in uh, uh, in the manufacturing in the back, we got five employees. Okay. You got a couple of people coming up, like Lee Roth saying, "Hey, Barbara Lehman at Chesapeake saying, hey. So a lot of people are joining us today. How so you doing, that, guys? You know, it wasn't that many years ago that your business was actually located in your backyard in a garage. <laughs> I think that was about what five years ago, James. Oh uh, man. Yeah. Well, it was not as longer than that. Um, we bought this building here back in 2015. So about five, six years. And right. you're right. Uh, you know, I, I moved my build, my business to the backyard after the uh, recession. So in 2008, just like you and me were competitors back then, a lot of people don't know this in 2008, when the recession hit, I mean, it just, it knocked us down. So I had to regroup. I had a, a big warehouse facility that I was leasing down the road. And uh, me and my wife, we went out and we sold our house we lived in and we bought a, a bigger house with a bigger space. It had uh, two and a half acres and had a nice big old 2,500 square foot building in the back. So we, we just regrouped, we had to restructure. And so we moved the business. Our business went from, I think back then we were, we were like six trucks and we went all the way down to three trucks and it was uh, something that, you know, we just had to do. And uh, I think the thing that turned me around was when I went to the 2000, I think it was 2012 Heat Shield Summit and uh, Mark Stoner was the key speaker and you were there and 
John Meredith and all those guys. And it was just that completely turned me around. Yeah. You made a big transition at that time, James. And it did. I from did. that point, you've really moved forward. But listen, today we're here. We want to talk about chimney sweeps. I mean, excuse me, chimney caps, chimney covers today. So that's yeah. going to be what we're talking about. So for those of you watching, what we're going to do here, we're going to start out. We're going to play. It's going to be about a three minute presentation. And what this is going to show you is a lot of different styles of caps that Owens makes. And then after that, we're going to come back and James and I are going to talk about different materials, different types of chimney caps, chimney covers, different things are going on. So we're going to go to the video now. So about three minutes, this will play. Then we'll be back. This is kind of like a rolling show of showing some of your uh, work here, James, of what y'all do at Owens Manufacturing and ship to your clients. So if you're if you're a dealer for Owens, you may see some of your product. You may see a cap that you ordered to actually roll across this. Well, James, that showed one heck of a variety of chimney caps. As you watch that roll across, did you ever imagine 20 years ago you would be producing those type of products? No, nah, never did. Do you remember that? Do you remember that day that you and I looked at your new building and you were getting ready to buy it? And I climbed up on a ladder on top of your office and I pointed to the other side and I said, James, you see that side of the building over there? And you said, Yeah. I said, that's going to be your new fabrication department to make chimney caps. And you remember that day? I do. Did you ever imagine how many people you got working in that area right now? Oh, we got five in the back right now. 
So you got five people now involved in manufacturing chimney caps there at Owens Manufacturing. That's that's pretty impressive. Well, listen, we got a guy that's asking a question, and let's let's answer his question. What would be your biggest and more most important advice to someone that wants to start their sweet business, their own sweet business from the ground? James, what would you tell this guy? Um, if he's, I mean, if he's not in the industry and he's wanting to start a, a chimney sweep business from the ground up, um, he's got to learn the trade and understand the business of the trade. That's going to be the first thing. And then obvious, just like all of us know, there's a business side to it. So you got a business side and then you got a technical side. You got to know what you're doing, uh, to go out and make money. And then you got to know how to manage your money when you make it. So you got to know both sides. So if I, I would say go through, um, I would probably go to some kind of chimney sweep school. Um, I know CSI has it. Um, I'm not sure uh, if NCSG is going to be having it soon, but um, I know some of that's still up in the air, but I would say, you know, start with that. I think going to a uh, chimney sweep school or even going to reaching out to someone like you, Jerry, CBC. Yeah. And I'd say you have, lot, you have a lot of resources with CBC. So, I, I mean, that's what I would do. Right. And I, you can see us, our email, our website's rolling across. So Adam, feel free to reach out to us. We'll be glad to help you if we can. So James, you know, you learn a lot about business in the last 20 years and you've learned a lot about chimney cap, even though you had sold a lot of chimney caps, there was a lot to learn about fabrication. So yeah. let's go through some of the things that we just saw there. So the first thing is, remember, we're talking to consumers. So yes. why, why do we need a chimney cap on our chimney, James? What's the importance of it? Well, I mean, there's, there's multiple things. I mean, you got to keep the rainwater out. That's, that's very important. Number one, uh, stop the water entry and then you want to keep out the animals and a lot of cases chimney caps are spark arresters so you want to it does all all of them now there's different types of caps uh, like we mentioned you got full coverage caps you got full coverage caps with drip edges you got top mount caps um, you know so you got to figure out what you need based on your situation right and one of the things is, as we rolled through there, there was a term there called hip and ridge. Some of those caps were hip and ridge. So James, let's talk about and explain when we say the term hip and ridge, what does that mean? Well, the hip and ridge is, uh, that's where the lid is kind of, it's sloped. And um, so you got, you know, it's got, you showed it in your photos a little bit ago and you can get it with the standing seams or you can get it without the standing seams. So the hip and ridge lid is sloped. So it's not flat. You know, a lot of your basic chimney caps you see in the market, they're all flat. Uh, and the hip and ridge just diverts the water and debris off the, the chimney cap better. It gives you an architectural look. A lot of times what you're going to do on that cap is match that hip and ridge angles to the same angle that is the house. So when y'all manufacture... Pitch. Yeah, when y'all manufacture caps, do people specify out the angle they want that that hip to be coming down, like a six twelve and eight twelve, those type of things? Uh, I would say it's 50 50 percent of our uh, customers they they say, yeah, I want I want this pitch. This is the the pitch my roof is, and this is what I want on the hip and ridge cap uh, on the lid. And then you got others who just don't care. Uh, we try to keep it consistent with the homeowner's roof if we can, and a lot of our customers that call in and order stuff, usually they'll give us some kind of pitch. Gotcha. Now, one of the terms that you saw in the video that we rolled was outside mount. If yeah. we're talking a chimney cap that has an outside mount, James, and we're, we're talking to consumers again, what does that mean when we're saying outside mount? That means it's a full coverage cap and it's going to go, it's going to cover over the outside of the brick. So you're going to have the outside skirt that's going to lap around that top course of brick. And so it's a full coverage. Okay. And then also one of the tile caps that we see that we use in the field a lot is what you market as the chimney helmet. And yeah. that was actually something that I was involved, involved in designing about 12 to 15 years ago. And where we're duplicating the overhanging drip edge that you would find with a chimney crown that would be specified by the Brick Institute of America. So tell them a little bit about the chimney helmet 
and the protection that that gives you on a chimney. Yeah. So the chimney helmet. So it, it's if you can imagine the outside mount skirt that covers the course of the outside brick, we came up with an idea where we want to give it we want to project out. It's almost like you create a corbel. So you got the skirt, then it steps up and then it steps out. And then you got that drip edge, that helmet drip edge. And so what that is for, so when the water runs off the lid and it hits the outer skirt, it'll divert the water away from the chimney. Okay. Kind of like, it's not like a gutter system, but it, it diverts it. So that way the, the chimney's not getting soaked as the okay. water runs off the cap. So there's something, James, if you look right there, Julie didn't just put a comment in because they're in the Chesapeake Bay area and they have a particular bird up there called ospreys. And ospreys love to build their nest on top of chimneys. So what she's saying is they encourage the hip and ridge style for the homeowners they deal with to keep the ospreys from nesting on the flat lids on their chimneys. Does that make sense to you? It does. It okay. does. I mean, the hip and ridge lids are really the best lids for a chimney cap. Okay. I prefer well, those over flat lids. Okay. So what about materials? What do you build chimney covers and chase covers out of? What type of materials do you use there? Uh, we use stainless steel, different gauges, uh, 24, 26 gauge stainless, depending on what we're building. Um, we use copper. Um, we do a 22 ounce copper. Uh, it's a little bit thicker material. Um, and then we do some galvanized as well. I think it's 24 gauge galvanized. Um, we don't do a lot of galvanized to be quite honest with you, because everything we do is custom and most of our customers, just like us, we want to offer our customers the best. So usually, usually if we're going to do anything, it's going to be stainless and then the stainless would get powder coated okay. and you can do galvanize um and you know do the paint grip uh galvanize and you can powder coat that as well but rarely is that asked from customers okay barbara peters asked a question which is do you have a picture of the hip and ridge with the skirt and drip edge you're talking about i believe that if she went onto your facebook page or your yeah. website would they be able to find these pictures or could you send them to yes. us yeah, I have. So the other, uh, you know, the manufacturing, what we've been calling manufacturing, it's it's actually called Owens Chimney Covers. So you can go to owenschimneycovers.com and you can pull up my website right now as we're speaking and you'll actually see those caps and everything we make from chase covers to custom caps to pot toppers um, to shrouds. We do a lot of shrouds. Um, we do it all. And everything here is custom. Gotcha. So it's not like it's uh, stamped out, mass produced like some suppliers. I mean, everything here is handcrafted and and uh, made here. That's one of the things, James. I don't think there's a lot of people can say that there's be there's a better quality product rolled in the United States. I mean, you've got some people there that have been manufacturing, working in chimney cap manufacturing for a number of years that bring. Yeah pile of experience into you. And these guys are very serious on their quality and what they turn out. And mm -hmm. I know that every time I go in the shop and talk to these guys, they're very dedicated to turning out a great product for each and every one of your customers. Okay. Yeah. So here's another thing, James. Now today, powder coating has becoming a very big thing for chimney caps. Would that be correct where people want their chimney caps powder coated? Yeah. Yeah, it is. We do quite okay. a bit of it. Okay. So let's tell them, let's tell the consumer, what does powder coating mean? Let's tell them what that is. Um, what we do is we outsource it. That's something that I've been working on. Eventually I'm going to have my own powder coat booth and uh, I'm going to do it all in-house. But right now we outsource it. And what they do is we'll, we'll take everything. We got a truck that's designated just for manufacturing and then we'll take it all down there. And we'll usually take a bunch after we make them. And they put them in um, what I would call an oven. Um, and basically they put them on hangers and it's a powder for them. And, uh, and they use electricity and uh, and they put the system in there. And so you got heat and then you have uh, and it's and it's hung on hangers and it's electricity and then the powder and then it just adheres to it. It's so actually pretty cool how it works. How many different colors can people get a chimney cap powder coat? I know I was down there one day and there was a powder coat finish that I swore was anti copper. And I've seen like brass colors and all kinds of things and gunmetal finishes. 
So yeah. basically you can make all kinds of different colors for architectural features. Is that right? You can, um, probably, uh, you know, the black and the, uh, the satin black and the bronze are probably the two most common. Uh, we do a penny vein finish. We do that quite a bit. That's starting to get popular. Uh, it really looks great. Uh, yeah. I would prefer that even just over raw copper. Yeah. Uh, but we can get just about any color you want or need. Uh, when you call up here, they're going to direct you to Brian. He runs that department for me and he'll give you, he'll send you to a site you can go to and it'll pull up all different kinds of all different colors and then you can pick. But the most common is going to be the, the BR 23 and then, you know, the, the bronze and the satin black and the penny vein, I think are probably what we do the most of. Okay, so if you look there, there's an old friend of yours and mine, Jay Walker. He played up there, made that made me a custom cap, shipped it to Florida, arrived undamaged, and looks great. So you're getting all kinds of stuff. Julie Dent put up another comment. We get asked that all the time. Do they come in different colors? And yeah. now we got another question here. And so you'll know, James, this is uh, Carlos. He's actually a student that's been on my platform and he's asking, so tell him what's the benefit of powder coating? Really it's, it's to match the house because the metal itself that we usually powder coat is stainless. So it's not typically, you know, the, the metal is not going to rust or corrode. Um, the powder coat is going to be more beneficial if you're putting it on galvanized uh, than you would stainless, but really it's to match the house is the big benefit. You don't want to put a big old shiny nickel color stainless steel cap on top of the chimney. Uh, it's just going to stick out. So people tend to want to get it powder coated to match the house. Right. And you also make quite an assortment of chase covers. Now you make the chase covers where they have both an outside mount and also your gutter. Uh, I mean, you know, your chimney helmet uh, overhang. Am I correct? That's correct. Okay. Yeah, we do that for the chimney covers. I mean, for the chase covers, the outside mount caps, we also do the helmets for the, uh, the shrouds. Okay. And if, you know, it's available, we do, we do a lot of helmets. Okay. So you don't have, like we make ABC, you make ABC, D, D minus E plus and everything else. Am I right? Yes. There's nothing in here standard that we make. Every cap we make is custom fit to, to fit our customers chimney. Okay. Um, I mean, it's made and usually the stuff, I mean, we usually do things that other uh, manufacturers or suppliers, some of them don't want to do. Yeah. Um, it just takes a lot of time. Okay. So here we got another question coming in from Chris Kessler, and he's actually been a student of mine before in classes I give. So how do you recommend securing outside? He's calling them outside fit, but I presume we're talking about an outside mount. Yeah. How do you recommend securing these to the chimney, James? It's going to depend on what type of veneer you got on the chimney. If it's brick, most uh, techs that uh, we usually send out Tapcon screws with the outside mount caps for our customers. So Tapcon screws is going to be probably the best option for masonry surfaces. But if it's a if it's wood siding or vinyl things like that, you might want to use screws. Um, you know, so usually want to secure it if it's masonry tap con and if it's, you know, wood or siding, something like that, you probably use uh, wood screws. Yeah. So if you look over your right shoulder, there's a picture of a chimney there with a cap on that banner right <laughs> behind you. What yeah. would you call, what would you call that style of cap, James? That's actually a top mount cap. Now that cap right there uh, was on a chimney. We had to make that to fit a chimney. And as you can see, it was almost like, a triangle shape on top all the way across. Um, if it were me, I would have tore the top of the chimney down and flattened it out and done it differently. But the chimney was this particular chimney you're looking at, it was old. Uh, I think it falls uh, under the historical age and they didn't want to change it at all. So we, we made a cap to fit the whole uh, style of the top of the splay that was on top. And I don't even think it's actually even a splay up there. I think it's just all brick. Yeah. So James, you've been a pretty successful in business. You have established a really good market for yourself. You're well known. Y'all have lots of testimonials. What's the secret to James Owens's success? Do you think? Um, just wanting the best for my customers. 
I mean, everything I do, it's, it's for good customer service. If you do good customer service, everything else is going to work out for you. Uh, that's why I got into chimney caps. I used to buy chimney caps from other suppliers around the country, just like everybody else. Uh, I just didn't like the quality. And it's embarrassing when you go to a house and you unpackage a cap that's going to cost the customer a lot of money. You unpackage it and the cap doesn't look that great. Um, you know, years ago before I got into it, Jerry, when you would come over and, you know, we'd see caps sitting there and, you know, I, I just, I knew I could do better and, uh, and I had the resources to do better. I just had to put my plan in, in motion and I did and, and it's worked out, but really I think my success, my secret to success really is just looking out for my customer's best interest. If you do that, everything else works out. That's it. And another thing you do, James, is you de you depend on your counseling business, your CFOs, your coaches, other yeah. people. You depend on outside advice and you're very open and you can take constructive criticism. Would you agree yeah. with that? Yeah, I do. OK, you well, got Robert, <laughs> well, let, let's do this. Tell people how to find Owens Manufacturing. How do they find you online and how do they do business with you? What would they tell me how they can look you up, please? Yeah. So you can go to uh, owenschimneycovers.com and when you, and there, there's a telephone number on there. Um, you can actually, if you wanted to uh, get an estimate on the website um, for, even though it's custom, if it's just a standard custom outside mount cap, whatever, you just key in the measurements. It'll give you a rough price on there. Um, if, if you have questions, which most people do, you just call in. When you call in, Brian will take care of you. Okay. So, and if Brian doesn't take care of you, let James know, right, James? Let me know. <laughs> uh, you know, you, you have things. I mean, you know, I'm not a huge manufacturing business. So if you can imagine, I mean, we do a lot of caps to be a smaller uh, manufacturing business. So, uh, I mean, my own service business sells a lot of caps. And most of what my service business sells is outside mount caps. And so all that is custom. There is no standard outside mount cap. So, well, James, there's a really good, uh, you know, there's a good compliment to Brian. Julie Dent said, Brian rocks. Okay. So tell Brian he got this mentioned on her day. So he better keep on rocking and keep impressing these people. Okay. Uh, I will, I'll let Brian know. Yeah. When Brian don't rock, we let him know, don't we, James? Well, he did. <laughs> okay, brother. Well, listen, I appreciate you joining him here today. I yeah. think you shared some really great information. So again, if you're interested in getting chimney caps from a great manufacturer that can supply you out there with your custom side, then look up Owens Chimney Covers. Is that correct, James? Owens yes, Chimney sir. Covers. Owens and they'll be glad to fix you up. And with that, appreciate you joining me. Be sure and join us next week because our subject matter next week is based on what we're going through in this country right now, which is there's a lot of people that have fireplaces that are not producing heat. They could be gas, they could be wood burning. And our subject matter next week is going to be how to make your fireplace more heat productive. And this is gonna cover both gas, wood, all kinds of things. So be sure and tune us in next Tuesday afternoon when we do that show. Appreciate you joining us and we'll see you next time on another episode of the Fireplace Show.